Okay, good afternoon. Yeah, in today's session, I will be discussing about two topics. One is about elongation of uh, bar of uniform section under its own weight, that is the self weight. Elongation of bar of uniform section under its own weight when it is uh, hanging due to its self weight some extension will take place in most of the cases this extension may be negligible but uh, in some cases it need it may need consideration okay so what will be the elongation due to self weight of the member that we will be finding and second topic is the principle of superposition one of the very basic principles uh, and very useful one okay yeah coming to the first topic the elongation of bar yeah so uh, first let us uh, these are the basic definitions uh, i am not going to discuss now consider directly the elongation of bar due to self weight yeah for that we will be considering a bar of uniform cross section of area a length l okay a bar of uniform section of area a and length l hanging from the top end okay now to find the elongation due to self weight we consider first an elementary strip of thickness dx at a distance x from b bottom end okay consider an elementary strip of thickness dx distance of that from bottom is x and let e be the young modulus of the material of the bar okay and w small w is the specific weight of the material of the bar specific weight means weight per unit volume so it will have the units of newton per meter cube kilo newton per meter cube okay units of weight and units of volume so the specific weight of the material is constant actually material property for a given material it is constant okay so now you consider the element okay of thickness dx if you consider this element on this element at this section at the bottom end of the element the weight of the portion below the section will be acting at this section okay understand right. so at this section if you consider you will have the weight w1 acting at this point where w1 is weight of the portion of the bar lying below this section okay that means the weight of bar for a length of x will be acting here okay so due to that this element gets elongated okay the small element what we are considering gets elongated due to this weight understand okay 
so the weight of bar acting on the element is w a x w is unit weight into a x is volume volume okay because unit weight is known to be the ratio of weight per unit volume so weight is unit weight into volume so w into ax ax is nothing but the volume of the bar lying below the section okay volume of the bar cross sectional area is a and length is x so volume is ax and w unit weight the product is the weight of the bar lying below the section okay so due to this the elongation of the bar is given as delta x equal to p l by a actually the formula is p l by a where p is the weight of the bar below the section w a x into length length of the element dx by a a is constant e is also constant okay so a gets cancelled here you will have w x dx by e okay w x e x by d so the total elongation of the bar is obtained by integrating this that means by summing up the elongations of number of such elements from bottom end to the top end okay so by integrating this you will get the total elongation of the bar due to the self weight okay so uh, integration summation is nothing but integration here so integral of w x dx by e so taking w by e out the integral of x dx is x square by 2 okay from the between the limits 0 to l so delta l equal to w l square by 2 e w l square by 2 e okay understand so if you observe this w l is nothing but total weight w l is nothing but Uh, total weight of the bar total weight of the bar okay so you can replace w l by capital w it takes the form capital w into l by 2 e this clear so the elongation of bar now is elongation of the bar is due to self weight is half of the elongation of the bar under direct load okay equal to the weight of the bar equal to the weight of the bar Is this clear so this is one derivation you can remember so this is the first topic next one is uh, the principle of superposition one of the important principle basic principle huh? which is a uh, applicable uh, most frequently okay we will be using this very frequently in solving the problems okay so what is principle of superposition just let me read this out sometimes a body is subjected to number of forces acting on it 
uh, as well as at some other sections outer edges as well as at some other sections along the length of the bird in such a case the forces are split up and their effects are considered on individual sections the resulting deformation of the body is equal to the algebraic sum of the deformations of the individual sections okay such a principle of finding out the resultant deformation is called principle of superposition that means we have seen the forces acting at the outer edges okay when forces are acting only at outer edges then entire section is subjected to the same force uh, throughout along the length you will have the same tensile force but if you have different sections where some other force is acting say p1 this is p2 p3 p4 something like this okay for equilibrium the summation of all these forces must be zero algebraic sum okay first that condition we have to verify after that we'll find out the elongation of the deformation of the body okay so the as per principle of superposition the elongation of the body the resultant elongation is equal to sum of the elongations of individual sections algebraic sum of the elongations are reductions deformations we call it generally so the total elongation is algebraic sum of the elongations deformations of individual sections for example if you have the points a b c d where the forces are acting we need to consider portion a b portion b c portion c d separately so you have three sections here a b b c and c d okay so you need to consider the elongations of ab elongation of bc and elongation of cd separately and sum this find the algebraic sum algebraic sum means considering the sign that means elongation is taken positive and uh, reduction is taken negative Uh, under tensile forces you will have positive deformation under compressive forces you will have negative deformation so we have to consider that while summing up the deformations to find the resultant deformation okay so delta l1 is pl1 by a1 e pl2 by a2 e and so on this is when the material is same through for all the three sections if you have the same material then this equation is applicable if we have three different materials ab bc and cd these three sections are made up of three different materials in that case this e1 e2 e3 we have to cancel because the angst modulo also are different for different materials okay and also the load p1 p2 p3 because the loads also are different on three sections the three we are considering here you may have any number of sections okay yeah so this is the this is how we'll find out the resultant deformation in case of uh, members subjected to forces at different sections okay forces at different sections the bar may be uniform in section or it may have varying sections also uh, it may have different materials with varying sections there are many cases possible so let us discuss one or two cases now first let us consider the case of uniform bar okay subjected to 
different forces at different sections. Okay. Let us see one example here. A brass bar having cross sectional area of 10 square centimeters is subjected to axial forces as shown in the figure. Find the total elongation of the bar. Okay. Take Young's modulus E equal to 0.8 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square. So area is 10 square centimeters. So convert that into millimeter square by multiplying with 100 because 1 square centimeter is 100 mm square. Okay. This conversion factors you need to remember 1 centimeter square is 100 millimeter square. Okay. Similarly, 1 meter square is 10 power 4 centimeter square, 10 power 6 millimeter square. All these conversions we must be um, thorough with. Okay. Yeah. Next, the Young's modulus for brass is 0.8 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square. First it is 2 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square for steel. For brass it is 0.8 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square. And let us consider the forces acting on the bar A, B, C, D. So we have a tensile force. Tensile force means acting away from at A of 50 kN. At B, the force is 80 kN towards right. That means on section AB, you will have tensile force. Okay? On section BC, you will have compressive force. Okay? Next, at C, we have a force to the left. That means on BC, you will have compressive force. Similarly, on CD uh, or BD, we have compressive force of 10 kN acting at B. So, what is the condition here? Equilibrium condition. Sum of forces towards right, that is 80, equal to sum of forces towards left, 50 plus 20 plus 10. So, this must be satisfied. Otherwise, the body will not be in equilibrium. Okay. So, first you have to check this. Otherwise, what happens? The body will keep moving. Okay. Unbalanced force makes it move. Okay. Yeah. So, in this type of problems, we will make simplification here by splitting up the forces. Okay. That is what uh, we do here in the by using principle of superposition actually. So the 80 kN force acting at B is split into three parts, three components, 50, 20 and 10. Okay. Yeah, you consider this A, B, 50 towards right, at B again, 20 towards right, at B again, 10 towards right. Okay? It is clear. So, next, actually, we split first. A, B and B, D. A, B and B, D. In between you have C, where you have 20 at. Okay. So, here we split this into 50 and 30. Now, the portion A, B also must be in equilibrium, isn't it? That's why you split the force for convenience, for simplification only. We consider this splitting as 50 and 30. So that AB, when you consider the free body diagram, it must be in equilibrium. Okay. So this 50 
and this 15 they balance each other so that AB is in equilibrium. The remaining 30 will be acting on BD. Okay? The remaining 30 will be acting on BD. So now you consider portion BD. Now we consider this again BC. You know at C we have 20 acting to the left. Correct? Is it right? So this 30 is divided again into 20 and 10. So BC and BD we will consider. So at B we have 20 and 10, 30 total. Okay. So this 20 is acting on BC so that BC is in equilibrium. The remaining 10 will be acting on BD so that BD also is in equilibrium. Okay. With this clear. So finally, you will have a tensile force on AB of 50 kilonewtons, a compressive force of 20 acting on BC and a compressive force of 10 acting on BD. Okay. So what will be the total elongation? We have seen the formula delta L is equal to algebraic sum of individual deformations. Okay, delta L1 for AB, delta L2 for BC, and delta L3 for BD. Okay, delta L2 is positive, delta L1 is positive because it is elongation, tensile force. Delta L2 is negative because it is compressive force, so you will have the reduction in length. Similarly, delta L3 also is negative. It is also reduction in length, okay, because of compressive force acting. So, what is delta L1? What is delta L2? We will find out. You can separately find and add, otherwise, you can use this expression directly. Delta L is equal to P1 L1 by A E. Here, A constant and E is also constant, same material. So, you can take that common. P1 is different. P2, P3 are different. Okay? L1, L2, L3 are also different. Lengths are also different for these three portions. So, 1 by AE is taken out. So, P1, L1 plus P2, L2 plus P3, L3. And this is general expression. But when you write here, P1, L1 by A1, E is positive. Second one, delta L2 is negative. That's why it is taken with a negative sign. Similarly, P3 L3 by A E is also negative, being compressive force. What is P1? 50 kilonewtons. Huh? We convert that into newtons, 50,000 into L1, length 600 millimeters. Okay? Newton millimeters. Here also, area is taken in square millimeters and Young's modulus 0.8 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square. So, all the units must be same. Okay. You have to convert the units into one uh, system. Okay. Uh, yes. Next, second part BC, you have 20 kilonewtons load and length 1000 mm and 10 kilonewtons on BD, length of BD. Length of BD means BC plus CD, 2200 millimeters. Okay. Length of BD you have to consider, not CD. Okay. So, we have 2200 M. Yeah. The resultant deformation is negative here. That means, as on a whole, we have. Uh, decrease in length of the bar, decrease in length of the bar. Okay? Yeah. So that's how we will make use of this uh, principle of uh, superposition.
for solving problems. Okay. So principle of superposition is it can be used anywhere actually to find uh, yeah in beams also we can use okay when you have number of forces acting the effect of these forces combined effect can be found by summing up the effects of individual forces okay by summing up the effects of individual forces if you want to find shear force due to combined system by summing up the shear forces due to individual systems you will get similarly bending moment deflection anything okay yeah, there is another example now with varying cross sections we have seen the case of a uniform bar subjected to different forces at different sections let us now see the case of a bar with varying cross sections with different forces acting along the axis at different sections so first thing we have to find uh, calculate the force p2 first remember ab cd is subjected to point loads p1 p2 p3 and p4 okay calculate the force p2 necessary for equilibrium that is important okay if p1 is 4500 p3 is 45000 all are in newtons p4 is 13000 newtons okay so what is the condition now for equilibrium p1 plus p3 is equal to p2 plus p4 so forces to the left and forces to the right sum of the forces acting towards left is equal to sum of the forces acting towards the right so what is p2 from this p3 plus p1 minus p4 p3 plus p1 P1 is 4500 plus 45000 minus 13000 P4. So this gives uh, how much? 32. 36500 Newtons. P2 is 36500 Newtons. So modulus of elasticity is given. 2.1 into 10 power 5 that means the material is steel okay for steel only the n's modulus is 2 into 10 power 5 around 2 we will take 2.1 if not given we will take it as 2 into 10 power 5 or 2.1 into 10 power 5 anything closer to that we can take so you have to find the total elongation of the member again here we split Okay, split this into three parts A, B, B, C, and C, D. Okay, so for equilibrium, this is the condition which gives P2 36,500 Newtons. So now we are splitting it into three sections, three parts A, B, B, C, and C, D. So what is the force acting at E? It is given 4500. At B, we have P2. What is P2? 36500. Okay. So 36500 is split into two parts. 32 thousand newtons 4500 here we will take 4500 because on the other side you have 4500 so that ab should be in equilibrium this force must be 4500 okay so taking this as 4500 the remaining will be acting at b on bc okay so here it is tensile 
acting on AB. Here, this is compressive acting on BC. Okay. I hope it is clear. So, 36,500 is split into two. One, 4,500 on AB. The other one is 32,000 on BC. Next, at C, you have 45,000 newtons, which is also split into two parts, 32,000 acting on B, compressive, and 13,000 acting on CD at C, tensile. Okay? But this direction is same. For these two, the direction is same, but it, it becomes compressive on BC, tensile on C. Okay? The direction is same towards left. You should not change the direction. You have to split and with the same direction. With same direction towards left. That is initial direction. Whatever it is, you have to take the same direction for the component forces also. Towards right means towards right. So for the left support, left member, left section it is tensile. For the right section it is compass. Here. For the left section, it is compressive. For the right section, it is tensile. Okay. Now, BC is in equilibrium. CD, 13,000 here, tensile. Okay. So, CD also is in equilibrium. Okay. If the body is in equilibrium, then each of the components must also be in equilibrium. That is the condition, okay, isn't it? So, we find out now the elongations of these three separately. Delta L1, Delta L2, Delta L3. Okay? Here also, the Young's modulus is same. The forces are different. P1, lengths are different. Areas are different. Only Young's modulus is same. So, we take Young's modulus common, P1 L1 by A1 plus P2 L2 by A2 plus and so on, P3 L3 by A3, okay. This is delta. Okay, again, we will take algebraic sum, means tensile positive, compressive negative, that means this one is negative. The remaining two are positive because they both are elongations. This and this. C, A, B and C, D, they are subjected to elongation, increase in length. B, C is subjected to reduction in length. Okay? The compression. Understand? So, how will you get the total elongation now? Delta L1, Delta L2, Delta L3. Yes, by using the formula. So, Delta L2 is negative. What is uh, 1 by E? 1 by 2.1 into 10 power 5 into P1. What is P1? 4500. And length. 120 centimeters. Convert that into millimeters. 1200 by A1. P1 L1 by A1. 6.25 centimeters square into 100. Okay, to convert centimeters square to millimeters square, we might multiply with multiplication factor is 100, isn't it? Similarly, for second portion, BC, the length is 60 centimeters, 600 mm. Area is 25 centimeters square. Okay? And how about the load? 32,000 into length 600 by area 2500 plus Third portion, load is 13,000, length is, what is the length? 90 
centimeter. So 900 by area 12.5 centimeter square that is 1250 mm square and this is positive elongation. Okay. So by calculating this first term becomes 0 0.041 second term becomes minus 0 0.037 and third term is plus 0 0.045 so the net deformation is sum of these three okay which is 0 0.0486 millimeters 0 0.0486 millimeters so i hope you understand the principle of superposition Okay, this is, that is all for today's session. Thank you. We will discuss some more topics in the next session. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.